Good evening, everyone. My name is Bikim Kumbuzi Powe, and I'm going to be facilitating tonight's panel discussion on uh, the importance of digitizing businesses in a COVID-19 impacted economy. But just to give some context for everyone tuning in on this discussion, this panel discussion is happening in celebration of the Black Umbrellas National Enterprise Development Awards 2020. And these awards really just highlight and the hard work and the dedication that goes into ensuring that black owned businesses are sustainable, they are profitable, and that they go on to create jobs in uh, the community that they serve. So I'm very proud tonight in the panel to have three distinguished speakers who are in their own rights going to contribute to this conversation and help us to understand how we begin to uh, think about digitization during a COVID-19 impacted economy. So with me this evening, I have uh, Ms. Puti Mahanyele Dabengo, who is the CEO of uh, NASPERS. I also have with me Ms. Matebe Swobo, who is uh, the executive for ESD at the Telcom Future Makers. And last but not least, we have Mr. Brandon Roberts, who is the CEO of Lit. How are you? How is everyone doing? Great, thank Great. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're all looking very good, looking very stunning in your uh, very offices, I presume. <laughs> yes, our offices at home. <laughs> our wife pushed me to the kitchen, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about all of that. But before we really just get into um, uh, many different questions that we have tonight. I also have to be mindful of time because we do have 30 minutes for this panel discussion. So I'm, I am going to ask you to please try and be succinct and, and to just hit at the, the high level points that you would like to get across. You know, the first thing I want to talk about is maybe from an organizational point of view, what each of you have been thinking about around COVID-19 and uh, what lessons you have taken out of the huge shift that's happened that uh, in many you know instances and in many contexts has brought about challenging and difficult times um, that many entrepreneurs and, and, and businesses have not been able to survive. How have you been thinking about it as an organization and how are you helping other organizations that you're linked to or that you're assisting think about it, learn through it and uh, come out of it stronger? Do you want us to just go in any order? Yeah, sure. So maybe we can go in the order that I okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Sure. Um, so, so, so we, um, we we did a number of things. The first thing was that as a corporate, we um, made a decision to support the South African government, and mm -hmm. we did that by providing PPE um, to the value of a billion rand, uh, which we flew in from from China. Um, and in addition to that, we also um, contributed to the Solidarity Fund. Um, mm. And so from that, um, we were able to make, and we, we contributed five, another 500 million rand to, 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 to the Solidarity Fund. Um, but then the other issue um, over and above helping the country, um, we needed to look at our own employees, the safety of our own employees. Um, and we very quickly, early on, before government even uh, came out with with the requirements uh, for you know the, the different levels at which we would be operating. We we started working from home, um, so yeah. everybody was placed working mm -hmm. from home. We made sure they had access to internet, computers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for us, this was something that that was important for us to respond to immediately and quickly all around the world. Um, but I'm very thankful um, that you know in South Africa we were about, we were able to provide significant support. Absolutely. Um, Ms. Pokebe, what about you? What have you been thinking about? Yeah, so I mean, there's a, there's a lot that COVID-19 has really brought about. Um, but I think uh, much similar to what uh, Pretty and her corporate have done, uh, a lot of the telco management has done a similar thing. And then I can speak more about, you know, what we've done specifically for entrepreneurs which is um, that we do have a portfolio of uh, entrepreneurs that we manage. We look after um, 300 plus um, entrepreneurs that are in various programs. And the very first thing that we did was to really assert some of the, the needs and the requirements, particularly for those entrepreneurs that were impacted from a funding perspective and had some uh, financial obligations uh, to meet. And what we did see, though, is in that investment, 
portfolio, a lot of the entrepreneurs could really pivot their businesses. And mm. I suppose that to, you know, COVID-19 really being the accelerator of technology adoption. So for instance, we had a company that uh, was working on an online value proposition called Lightbulb Education. And mm. in partnering with that company, we were not only able to, to ensure that his business is, is sustainable, um, but that you know South Africans also have access to education uh, even during this time uh, of COVID-19. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've also it with various uh, enterprises in our portfolio to really think about how we could bring innovative health offering solutions. Just this month, we launched um, another uh, angle uh you know we looked at COVID 19 from another angle which is mainly a mental health angle and mm -hmm. we partnered with uh, our startups to really bring mental health solutions to uh, the, our employees in general um, and also bring the solution to market for for various employees um obviously we've got uh, various programs so some of our startups had to work um throughout the the period and were really the, the essential services um, even from from lockdown so some of our startups really uh, required support in terms of you know ppe protective uh, personal equipment and were able to support them in that sense we increased connectivity requirements um, for many of our startups and and we've really seen most of them being able to pivot their business models and yeah. and actually grow from from this time, which is which is really awesome. And I think it speaks to uh, the, the opportunity in digitalization of small businesses um, in this time. Yeah. That makes so much sense. Thank you so much for that. So I'm very zealously jotting down everything you're saying because I'm going to tie it into our next round of questions. But I think, Robert, I think this is the perfect moment for you here to speak uh, from, a, from an SMP point of view about um, how you're leveraging digitization. Can you speak on that as well as just an overview of how your organization has responded to COVID 19? Sure, no problem. I guess. Uh, the first place to start, I'd like to mention the approach. So when COVID-19 landed, uh, even as a small business at that point, we had to make a trip to prove one of our products in Tanzania. At that point, we couldn't go. So we couldn't pilot our product with the largest bank in the country. We couldn't do what we intended to do, what we've been preparing for a year and a half for. We couldn't get to happen, which is the first challenge that many small businesses now have faced. You have a new agenda, a new distribution, a new expansion. You have debts to pay, you have all these particular things mm. and you've got a business. So in our approach or change and what we started testing first with ourselves was what does focusing on the things that matter most mean to you? It mean, mm. and to us it meant cutting back on certain sets of meetings, making sure our agendas are structured, fit, structured fully, making sure that what is our expenses and expenditure that we actually running through, what's necessary and not. Very, very basic mm. things that saw us through quite a lot of the toughest times that we were experiencing at that point. And then we applied that to some of our customers, restructuring how they have their, some of their setups in the organizations to try and get it to something a lot more efficient and streamlined. But then something for us also changed on our Little Fish business in particular. Our first focus was on SME tooling to run your stores or your business more effectively through automation and AI and all the lovely things that I'd like to say, but it's obviously a lot of time and it will keep us here for about a year. Um, all of that, and we decided that no, for a period of time, this service is actually just going to be free because if there's a time when people need it, they need it now. So let's get profiling, let's get services, let's get what they really need now. And we went from having close to 200 SMEs one month to close to 2,000 the next uh, running and using our this platform. One, because we changed it to free, and two, because we just started pivoting consistently over and over, focusing on what matters most. If the meeting was going to run for two hours on a design before, it ran for 30 minutes now, because we realized that our resources are a little bit more limited than what we had before, and we were more frugal. So if I can say what COVID-19 taught us as a business is to actually take care of what we have most and really focus our efforts on what will give us the best results. And I know many people can say that's what we think we're doing. But when mm. things are in excess, you don't focus on it as much as what you would believe you would. 
And uh, yeah. it's not that we were a business that was about to close. We were far from it. But the point was is that we did not know how long it would last. So as much as we had reserves and everything else, we needed to make very sure we could keep our staff safe, our business running, and our dreams to be almost reached. So what did we find in terms of digitizing SMEs? Um, so to give you an indication, before we started this, we went to Tanzania, went to Kenya, went to Uganda, South Africa, and quite a few places in profile before we started. My experience is in financial services across 20 different countries, all in Africa for in my past life, which was fan fantastic. And today we run family stores because we've done it our entire life. If you would tell my uncle, um, you don't know your cash flow, he'll tell you, you don't really know what you think you know, because he knows it. He knows it like the back of his hand. He knows his stock. He knows his orders. He knows everything that he needs over there. His suppliers give him interest-free credit, for example. So what do they really need? In lifetime moments where maybe a fridge breaks or something, they need that extra help. So what we then decided to do was in making our services free to digitize the in-store operations and online business of an SME became our primary focus. And what we've now learned is there's so many more products and offerings that can be given to them, whether it be by suppliers, financiers, and anybody else. It could be agent models for different sets of products. With this data now there, it's not just about them attracting better customers. It's about service providers now finally being able to give them better products and services that they've been dying to receive because it's not even known. So mm -hmm. I hope that, that helps answer. Maybe just uh, um, in, in, in two or three sentences, what specific tools would you recommend for a small business that's uh, tuning into the conversation and that faced some of the struggles that you spoke about at the beginning? So the first, the first things is how do you get paid? Um, many markets are currently cash based. If you are going to at least get a cashless approach, tools that I would look at for sure is like Yoko, uh, some of their point of sale tools, as well as their online payment facilities straight through a link. Ozo is also a great one with their free tiers. If you take your business online, i.e. into a marketplace type, check your margin. That's the first thing. Depending on the marketplace, they do charge a highest bit of commissions. And you need to be sure that your type of business, if you like a liquor business, use the Bottles app if you really need to get some stuff out there. If you want to automate your install tools that you're running with, I'd love to say just pick Little Fish. It's the best product out there, but that's me being biased. There's quite a few. There's Kite, there's Little Fish, and there's, there's a bunch more. If you want to take your business online in a very simple way, DIY, do it yourself. Um, yeah. Again, I would say take Little Fish. It's a great tool. But there's other tools out there as well, like a Shopify, a Wix, a Squarespace, and so forth, which are all great for you to end up using. Um, but again, it really depends on the need of your business. How do you want to distribute your product? Do you create the uh, supply ready? Have you got the customers coming to you? So a little bit longer than three sentences, but I hope it touched on the different kinds of tools from payments to customer management, sales, and taking your business online. But it all depends on the budget. <laughs> well, absolutely. <laughs> very much valuable and useful um, and, and certainly necessary. I'm going to bring in um, Puti and Mateva from a, a big business point of view. Um, both mentioned very interesting points around working from home, around mental health interventions that we're doing. I want to speak specifically to that and how you think some of the policy changes, the work culture changes that you've made during this period, how do you think that could go on to positively impact um, the economy even beyond COVID-19? Well, we've, we've, okay, we, we, we've um, made sure that we uh, provide as much support um, to the employees. Um, and so from that perspective, they have access to, we all have access to uh, psychologists and, and, and all of that, a, a comprehensive wellness plan um, mm. in order to make sure that, that everybody has access to that. Because um, the issue is that it's, it's not just the physical wellness, but the psychological wellness as well, particularly for people uh, living by themselves. So we've, we've made sure that we look out for that. Um, but in addition, we've also made sure that the uh, that, that managers who are responsible for particular departments are engaging a lot more frequently uh, with, with staff um, so that there is that ongoing um, interaction. Um, we also run global surveys uh, through, within the company um, to check on how people, and, and these surveys are in terms of getting 
the, that feedback, that in, you know, individual feedback on how people believe they are being supported. Because it's one thing for us to believe that we are doing all of this for STAR, but it's another thing for how people actually respond to that. Um, and yeah. so that is something that, that, that has been important for us. Um, the issue, I think, is how we are going to be responding to this as South Africa potentially hits the second wave which we, we don't know, as we've seen in other parts yeah. of the world, you know, where, where they have hit that, um, you know, in South Africa, what is the impact going to be? Are we going to be seeing it being um, as, as extensive as what we've seen in Europe and other parts of the world? Um, and so, you know, these are things that we are trying to make sure that we are ready for. And that is part of the reason why one of the things that we have done is made sure that even though we've got this work from home policy, um, we've also made some workspace available for our mm. staff because not everybody can work comfortably from home. You've got people who've got small children and, and all other issues. And so from that perspective, we've made both available to our staff. The, the issue is for them to be able to work in a comfortable manner, but also in, in, in a place where they, they feel that they are able to actually do the work properly and have access to, to the internet uh, capability. The, the, the yeah. issue with power cuts has been a big problem, um, yeah. but, you know, uh, but we, we continue to, to deal with that on an ongoing basis. Thank you so much for that. And Matebe, from your perspective, if you, if you, you know, if you agree, what would you add to what Putin said? Yeah, and I think those are, those are all very good uh, measures because, I mean, the points that uh, Putin was highlighting around, not everybody can work comfortably from home, you know, issues of connectivity. Um, I think we've been quite mindful in making sure that all employees have access to data and you know, are not having to pay for all of those meetings um, out of their own pockets. Um, we've had various uh, interventions, you know, um, supporting people's livelihoods that in general would have de depended on, on a physical interaction, you know, to supplement some of their incomes. Um, you know, we've had key intervention through uh, the Telcom Foundation, you know, through you know, giving and and really raising additional income for those that just cannot uh, get through this period. So some some families are, you know, some employees are married to entrepreneurs, for example, who would then need to you know, supplement the income and then during lockdown that wasn't always possible for, for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so in addition to all those uh, work from home policies, and I think what what has become quite clear is that the pandemic has brought a lot of um, you know, more, more flexible hours uh, for working, but you know a lot of people thought that the commuting time, now that it's it's not there anymore, it's up to grab for meetings, you know, which is not always the case. So we've had to be mindful in terms of people taking a break um, and really taking time to recharge and to think creatively. You know, I've seen quite uh, intentional campaigns, um, you know, that, that we've come up with from an HR perspective that talk about, you know, take a break, weekend, you know, yoga, Friday, or you know things that really focus on you know not just getting work done you know which which is important to get work done but I think we we will be more mindful of the entire employee yeah mm. you know I'm going to bring in Brandon and um, I, I, it's for a specific reason actually I mean in your first response you quite pointedly spoke about some of the resources that you think would be quite helpful for um, SMEs and uh, anyone just looking at your story um, for inspiration as to how to brave it through COVID-19. But we have um, two industry leaders in this panel discussion, and I think it's a really great opportunity for uh, to build a, a robust conversation around what uh, specific things we need to see happening, educate and prepare, not just enterprises, but consumers as well, um, as far as digitization and banking is concerned. So as a, as, a, as, a, as a business owner, as a small business owner, could you speak to that and maybe just, uh, um, you know, end up with a call to action? I literally give you permission to do that. And then I'm going to take it up to um, both Kuti and uh, Mateva, who are uh, both 
part of organizations and leading organizations that are key industry leaders in the technology sector, maybe speak to how they envision educating and preparing enterprise and consumers and how they can vary some of the things that Brandon uh, might bring up um, in his response. Brandon? All right. A uh, little bit on the spot, but that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> so if I may begin... Uh, our story about braving it, to be honest with you, I'm very thankful to my business partner, David Kawa, who was actually going to be on this call today, but unfortunately couldn't make it. But basically, David Kawa has got a background in financial services, starting the first credit bureau in Tanzania and then Kenya and so forth. So one key principle that we focused on was how we manage our cash and focused on our retained earnings, i.e. a minimum of six months worth of retained earnings in the business, regardless of any investments and things we wanted to make. Mm. And at the beginning, we kind of disagreed a little bit. I mean, we got revenue, we've got business going, we've got customers, it's all great. And then COVID happened. And we've seen from airlines across the globe and many other industries, once the three month market, there's no more reserves. And mm. one thing that allowed us to brave this is my business partner, who's very, very strong world in saying, no, this is what we're going to do. And we followed that principle from day one. And it really, really helped us. It took away the stress of the day to day that much that we could focus on our goals. So that was the first thing that really helped us break some of the storms, that understanding. The second part is also realizing that finance is more of an asset than a liability very often. We think of, oh, we go and take out a loan or borrow something and oh dear, all of a sudden we've indebted ourselves. Very often, it's not the case. But the point of the matter is, if you don't understand some of the financial aspects, you could find yourself in a hole because you forget you have to repay. Or you forget the terms, so you don't pay attention to the rates, or you just don't do the right things. Again, very fortunate to my business partner, Dave, who, who knew that very, very well. In terms of the other part about braving the storm, personally, I've grown up in family stores my entire life, helping thousands of customers a day, what I do in the butcheries, the supermarkets. It's what we've done. It's what my family's always done. So the one thing that it always taught me is to stay close to your customers. Negotiate. Change your terms. React to the situation at hand. Because in this instance, there was no way to prepare for a pandemic. All we could do is react and react only to it. So again, what did we need to do with our customers? We needed to talk to them and say, you know what? We need to adjust our pricing. We need to adjust our timing. You can drop two resources off. It's fine. We understand your constraints. We also have ours. So don't forget about us. The second there was some silver lining, we were the first people they called. So again, value some of the relationships that you have and maintain them. Respect what you've got. Don't panic too much. Um, and I guess we are also fortunate that we are in the technology industry. Um, for businesses that are out there that are in the retail chains, the food chains where they couldn't actually open. If I speak towards my family, we one of our businesses is a bottle store that sustains my uncle and the entire household. That was closed and uh, completely closed. So you were stressed about whether it would be looted and many other aspects above, above and beyond actually just paying the bills. But again, some of my uncle also knew that you save for a rainy day. Very simple principle. But it's easy to say when you've got something in excess. So, again, corporate support in many industries, like uh, was mentioned earlier by Putty, is amazing. The fact that one and a half billion rand was invested yeah. in helping people. That there is something unimaginable. And when yeah. private businesses or large clients like you guys that are already focused on making a difference come to the party, it's, it's unimaginable the help. I mean, we applied even in one of our small businesses and we did get some assistance. It was very difficult. I wish a part of the conversation could be about sorting out government system for SMEs and everything else. But that's a topic for another day. But it's it's this time, these months, I think this whole 2020 has been a difficult time. So with that, I'll leave it there with how we braved it to, to your answer or to your question and really looking forward to hearing more. Yeah, thank you so much for that. For you, maybe just build on, on everything Brandon has said regarding educating and preparing people for difficult economic times. Do you have anything to add? Yeah. Yeah, um, so, so, so one of the, um, the, the, the important parts of, of the work that I do is in the foundry. Um, and in the foundry, we provide equity uh, funding to, um, uh, you know, to, to, to early stage 
founders. Um, and so what, what we do there is we provide um, equity capital, but we also provide a lot of support in the growth of the business. And so uh, work with them towards, you know, getting them to be able to expand. And what we saw during this uh, COVID period was that in certain instances, certain businesses, by the nature of their business, um, had great difficulty in being able to continue to grow and actually just existing. Um, and, you know, but then you had businesses that were able to continue flourishing because of the nature of the business uh, that, that, that they're in. Um, and so we, we, we saw that, 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 that mixture. Um, but the important thing for us was to be able to provide support to our founders in making sure that they, they've got access to capital where required. Um, and, and also in making sure that we are helping them in pivoting their businesses. I think one of the things that we saw that was important was that you couldn't continue as if things were normal. You couldn't, if you were looking at expanding before, now you had to focus on just keeping the business that you have. Um, yeah. And so, so it was it was a whole process uh, in, in working with, with, with the different founders um, to make sure that they, they can continue to focus on, on, on their business um, and, and really sustaining it um, so that they can continue to employ the numbers of people um, that they employ. Um, and so we, we, we've been thankfully able to do that. But in addition to that, what I'm thankful for is the fact that in, despite this COVID period, we've been able to continue investing in businesses. So recently through this COVID period, we invested 100 million into uh, a company called Aerobotics. Um, which yeah. is an agri uh, agri tech business, um, and then we also just recently, uh, just a, a few weeks ago, invested into a company called uh, Food Supply Network, a uh, business to business uh, marketplace uh, ordering uh, system for manufacturers, distributors, and buyers, um, and and it is an important uh, business for restaurants, hotels, etc. But you know, mm -hmm. it's it's been important for us to be able to provide that support, um, support in terms of. Founders being able to see that, yes, we are still willing to invest into startups in South Africa, uh, notwithstanding the environment, and also to provide them with support in this difficult period so that they can be able to continue to remain sustainable. Absolutely. I really love the point you make about even in difficult times. I think there's a strong message that even at the end of this period, there's positive things that are going to come out. Um, Mateva, from your side, um, what would you like to add? Yeah, I just want to add that, you know, one of the things that, that happened during COVID-19 was all of a sudden uh, supply chains were quite disrupted, you know, so it actually meant that um, the, the, the supplies or, or the goods, the services that we relied on um, overseas, you'd have to, you know, plan a lot more intelligibly uh, and also utilize the supplies that you have locally a lot more. So I think for us, when when this started happening, um, a lot of the business in our, in our especially the, the entrepreneurship um, fund that we have, a lot of those businesses started becoming such a good source of um, support even to us, you know, in a sense that uh, all of a sudden we found ways to use them more efficiently and to do more, more business with them simply because of the way they were, they were set up and the type of services that they were engaging in. So, for instance, you know, when we think about um, how we better want to connect with customers and, and provide them more personalized services, we started thinking about businesses that could provide um, personalized delivery for customers, you know, and to enhance our own um, experience with customers, but also to grow some of these businesses. So I think for us, it's been quite an interesting period where we look to entrepreneurs for some of the solutions that we probably may not have done so in the past. And I think in that instant, for me, COVID-19 pro uh, provides an exciting opportunity in that way, especially if we take a view that supply chains will probably be more localized, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to manage uh, supply chain risk. Uh, and we take a view that uh, generally, you know, limitations of of travel and, and the necessity to really solve some of our own uh, problems uh, will then have to be done by us. You know, so I think for me, COVID-19 is 
it, it definitely is, a, is an awakening to, to all of us to really say, you know, we've been dealing with um, the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, right? Mm -hmm. But now it's, it's been accelerated by seven years or so. So this is according to, to McKinsey. By seven years or so, um, technology adoption has just happened almost overnight. Um, mm -hmm. And we are also left with a new problems, I suppose, that I think is the opportune uh, problems for us to solve. And not only just as those that adopt technology, but those that then start to to really leave the this, this space a lot more. I, I really love what you said. Um, you know, when you when you spoke about fourth industrial revolution, there's a the going joke. I'm not sure if you, you've seen a meme of a man standing on a step ladder and trying to crop from industrial revolution two to industrial revolution four, and people share that to say that's where South Africa is, and that's what South Africa is trying to do. Do this basically leap two revolutions forward, but what you're saying is true. We have, you know, crossed that uh, barrier by leaps and bounds. We're seeing people adopt technology and smartphones at a rapid pace, and people realizing that they can come on their phones, um, they can change their entire families uh, literally just by using their smartphones. And so, maybe before we go into a quick closing remarks, any inspirational businesses, startups, or ideas that you've come across, um, whether it's education or health or agriculture that you think you know have really been a part of the lives that came out of this period. Um, I think, so how do you want to go? I think you want to start and then you move yeah. all the way. Who should start? Sorry, I missed that. Maybe let's go person and then up to put you. Okay, start okay. With, with me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I broke up there for a second. So, a business that, or a startup, well, they're not really a startup anymore, but they're a business that I do believe has had a really positive impact, and I've really loved seeing their change. That's Yoko. I'm a seriously yes. big supporter of them. I mean, they ran initiatives called Support Small. Uh, they reduced their price on their card machines. They changed their payment systems. They did so much in a short space of time to keep like restaurants and other things running. I think they had a serious positive impact on those that they worked with. And you have the second piece or second startup, which was Ozo. And uh, Ozo, again, did something very similar on the payments, payment side, allowing for online or digital payments for up to a million for an SME and for a really small micro business or even a small business owner. That's probably a year's worth of turnover that would be on that all for free as opposed to 2.7%. And I know I speak about payments, but the main thing is, is that the way, I, the way I viewed them is that people need to get paid. And the best way to get paid, according to the whole COVID change, was how do you do it in a way that's safe? And that was digital. So some of these shifts that these companies did, I do feel, and from the stats that it shows, they help revive and they've helped change how we trade with these SMEs going forward, many of them. So those are the two that I find inspirational that definitely made a great impact. Um, Thank you so much for that. Kuti, in your view, what's been really amazing to see? So <laughs> there's, there's been a, a number of things that have been amazing to see. Um, you know, it, it, it's been good to see how the companies that we've invested in have, have survived through this period. Um, seeing a company like Aerobotics, you know, actually continue to, to grow quite substantially through, through this period. Um, but it, it's been wonderful to see how Take A Lot has become such a household name now. Everybody uses Take A Lot, <laughs> which, which is really uh, wonderful to see. Um, and and we we you know our, our hope obviously is that uh, people see uh, the benefit of being able to order things online and you know have them safely brought uh, to their homes um, so that we can start to see more growth um, of these um, internet businesses that that we have here in South Africa and growing beyond South Africa also. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's, yeah. it's very funny people jump onto these platforms because it's, it's the safest option but when they are on the platform they realize that there's actually a world of benefits that surpass how they've yeah. already and then it's easy too so uh definitely yeah. on on, on take lot uh matebe yeah. what would you say has been amazing to see yeah i mean we've had sure I've, i mean i've been so encouraged by a whole lot of startups that are 
really solving real problems like, like I mentioned, you know, education, health, etc. But there is one startup that I that is probably not uh, known yet, um, and they're called Beam. And what these guys do is they they almost democratize the VR um, avatar type of experience for small businesses. Oh, wow. So they're small businesses to be able to um you know create their own vr ar experience and advertise themselves online but also reach out to customers at a fraction of the cost so i really really liked their value proposition it has, it has multiple use cases um honestly um and we were considering them for for different uh, uh use cases so they were quite yeah they, they had inspired me quite a lot and and to me those type of value propositions that really are on the edge of technology, but also really solving uh, key problems, you know, that, that we're experiencing and democratizing, you know, pricing. That's, that was really exciting for me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, um, for all the comments that you made and uh, the knowledge that you shared with us, the recommendations, and of course the startups that are paving the way to an amazing future. As uh, Black and British, I think we truly believe, and the reason why we're even celebrating entrepreneurship during a COVID-19 impacted economy is because we really, really believe that it's not just any difficult time. It's a difficult time that's really going to catapult us into the future that we want. It's going to be a repeat of the World War II or World War I, where during those very difficult times, people come out of that with some of the most impeccable technologies that we've seen today that really push humanity forward. And so we're hoping that the conversation on COVID-19 doesn't just you know, revolve around um, some of the challenges that we've seen, but it pushes beyond that to uh, really looking at how we can educate and strengthen our economy, um, get people to participate in the you know, tech revolution and, and uh, use tech for good in empowering communities, creating jobs and uplifting communities. I'd like to thank all three of you for being part of this panel discussion today. So that was Ms. Puti Mahangile Tabengwa and uh, Ms. Matebe Zwolo and of course, Mr. Brandon Robert. And with that, I would like to thank you on behalf of Black and Villas. And of course, thank everyone who tuned in for this panel discussion and took time out to listen to all the views. And as I announced the fickle end of this conversation, um, you know, I'd just like to wish you well going into the future for your organization as well as for yourself and of course for everyone who tuned in. Thank you so much for being part of this. Thank you guys. Thank you. Now let's, nice see you. <laughs> let's see how you let's see how you What's your cash phrase? <laughs> <laughs> I know, see you I know soon. I just I just wave my hand. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Hi right, guys. And uh, keep well. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.